Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the second episode here on Elm Creek my alternate let's play series to Hout Baileron where we're not playing with seasons we're not playing with um, a bunch of um, all that sort of stuff we're kind of doing what we want when we want which is why Dolores Flufflebotham here is currently in the process of plowing all her fields now I did record an episode of Elm Creek yesterday um, however <laughs> uh, that video has been lost to the recycle bin because um, basically the first thing that happened yesterday when I was um, on my computer yesterday afternoon I've spent a lot of time yesterday afternoon trying to tr do, do going through some troubleshooting and stuff with the game and trying to figure out whether or not um, uh, what was causing basically what's causing my crash on how Baylor on when I go anywhere near that bloody spinnery area um, so I spent a lot of time troubleshooting that I even ended up downloading the Giants version of the game and installing that so right now I've got two copies of Farm Sim installed on my PC I've got the Steam version and the Giants version, both of which crash on how Baylor on when I go near the um, the spinnery. So the problem is not so much the game; it seems to be something environmental, which is Giants' fancy way of saying it's sort of it with your computer or your 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 the way your com your you know something with your computer, your hardware configuration that we haven't we haven't sort of predicted or we haven't planned for um, and therefore you run into this um, render pull error um, so kind of got to leave that with them basically <laughs> for them to do some more deep diving and troubleshooting um, but um, what is interesting to note is that having done all their different troubleshooting steps and stuff, I had the game set in windowed mode rather than full screen. And of course, when I hopped on to my um, hopped into Elm Creek yesterday evening to record episode two, um, I was recording away quite happily for about forty minutes. Finished the episode, logged out of the game, went into Sony Vegas to start editing and rendering the video, and. Uh, there was no video there was audio there was game audio and there was microphone audio um, but there was just a blank screen because OBS is currently set to capture full screen applications on my game capture um, source not windowed applications so because of that OBS failed to capture the video footage so i had to scrap the video so this is actually for me episode three but for you guys it's episode two what happened in episode two i hear you now all shouting at your screens well i will show you in a moment i will show you um i bought my farmhouse and placed my farmhouse so i've got a sleep trigger and i've got a spawn trigger here at the farm um i also placed some greenhouses which you can probably see on the left hand side there um got some beehives down at the bottom of the map there near that lovely little um tower thing um i also got a, f a farm dog i've got doggo um i've i bought myself a dog he's he he lives in a little dog house dog kennel outside the back of the house but basically what i did in episode two i removed a couple of trees from that area over there where the greenhouses and house are i removed i chopped down three trees basically and i set apart chopping them up and putting them through the um putting them through the um the wood chipper putting them in the wood chipper um i had low end i had no end of issues during that um the game physics when it comes to dealing with logs and picking up objects and stuff still not fantastic <laughs> um um, plus, I also ran into the slight issue that because technically it's rather weird, I'll show you if I actually if I get out and show you and run across there, 
Okay, this area, it all looks nice and open, and you think to yourself, oh, I tell you what, if I chop down all these trees, if I cut down these trees, I'll be able to make a, a m nice big placeable area for myself. However, you run into a problem where uh, there's a wall. There's an invisible barrier. Um, basically, the edge of the map is here. It doesn't start. So where I'm at, at currently is the edge, actual edge of the map. Okay? That is like the, the, the solid wall, the invisible wall. It doesn't, you know, I can't go beyond that. Despite the fact that the, um, like they say, the cursor here in the map screen goes a little bit further. It's the same down the bottom here, actually, as well. It's the same down the bottom end of the farm. Um, it looks like you've got more room than you actually have. The invisible wall catches you out very quickly. My dog. There he is. There's dog. Oh, do you want some food, dog? There you go. Dog is called Prince, apparently. I don't know if that's his real name. Hello, dog. So, yes, Dolores has a dog. And as you can see, basically what I've done, um, I've got an area here for my honey to spawn. Um, I, if you look in the map screen, there used to be a field here. Field 81. That has gone. Um, that's been replaced with um, this lovely, lovely gravel flooring. Um, and I'm currently in the process of ploughing all these other fields together. Uh, and then what I plan to do is I plan to go through. I'm going to do the I'm going to do the um, the um, sh uh, sugar beets next, and then possibly this corn as well. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I own quite a bit of the land over here. Uh, so there's room for me to put in another field here as well. Um, but basically, I'm going to plow the whole field, all the fields. And then I'm going to put in, put the roads back in where I want the roads back in. So rather than having, you know, seven or eight quite small little silly fields i'm probably gonna only have two or three fields on this plot of land so yes we might come down here and what i plan to do i probably plan to come down here and remove a few of the the trees down here like i say i've got me i've got me me beehives i've got six beehives placed down here I've got my little lime station, fill station thing ready for when I need that as well. I haven't got a silo yet, but as I say, it's going to be a while before we're harvesting crops because quite simply, I'm going to try and get this map laid out how I want it, first and foremost, all my fields. Ooh. That's why, like I say, I'm doing the ploughing. I'm removing everything. People, I know people are going to go nuts at me because I'm, I'm, I'm plowing perfectly good crop. But we could have waited until after we'd harvested, but uh, we've got cotton here. I was never going to harvest the cotton because cotton harvesting is, oh, it's slow. <laughs> it's pain. It's a bit like potatoes and sugar. Potatoes, I don't mind doing so much nowadays. Um, sugar beets, I don't mind doing so much now either. Um, because the machines have got better. The machines have got really good in the game. For doing new sugar beet harvesting and potato harvesting. I actually quite enjoy those crops now. Um, however, the, the, the cotton harvesting, I'm still not a big fan of. The reason, and, and a, a, one of the reasons for that is, and I'm going to say this right now, it's because of the silly system that giants use for bales. And you have this issue when doing normal bales, if you're doing straw bales, grass bales, hay bales, silage bales. It also extends to the, um, the, the cotton bales. The fact that you cannot unload a partial bale in the game drives me nuts. You know, if I've got 97% in my baler, I want to be able to eject that and take it off and sell it. The game will not let you. Unless that bale is 100% complete, it won't come out of the baler. Oh, 
Oh, that drives me mad. I know we always get mods that enable you to p unload partial bales, but obviously they're not out yet. But I, honestly, I don't know why giants have not just an allowed us and given us the option in game just to empty the baler. Whatever's in it, whatever fill percentage it's at, let us just eject that bale from the machine so the machine is all is empty because there's nothing worse like for me if i'm if i'm doing a, a, a cotton harvesting i'm probably going to lease the harvester i'm not going to buy a harvester because it's something that i will use very rarely so i will lease it for the the, the short period of time that i am doing my my harvesting and then i will, will return it to the store the problem with that is that when the cotton baler is full of cotton that you can't eject out of it you're returning it back to the store with money sat in it you don't get paid for that cotton you lose that cotton so that is one of the reasons why i, I tend to avoid cotton harvesting at the moment um once mods come out that enable us to empty the machines um or we get modded harvesters that allow you to empty the tanks properly so you actually can keep and sell all of your cotton um then yes i will probably probably dive back in and we might do a, some cotton harvesting on this map certainly more likely to do cotton harvesting here on elm creek than we are on um Hout Baileron. i don't think the um i don't think the climate on Hout Baileron really would be suitable for cotton in real life Whereas I think cotton in the American Midwest is probably more feasible. I don't know. But yeah. Basically getting these fields ploughed. Like I said, sugar beets and the corn field will be next. Um, and then it will be a case of deciding what I'm going to replant, obviously. We're not tied and restricted because of um, seasons. So I can plant whatever crops I want on the map to start with. And then figure out where we're going to go from there. Like I say, I would have liked to have got a little bit more build as far as farm structure. Uh, but that will come in a... Once I've got the fields... Well, like I say, once I've got the fields ploughed and I know where I'm at with my... with all of that. And then I can put the roads back in. Once I've got the roads back in, I'll have a better idea of where I need to put sheds, where I need to put the silo, things like that. So we're going to go down that road. At the moment, obviously, the, the great thing is having the bees and the... Um, Having the bees and the greenhouses means I am actually earning an income. Um, because we are actually getting product that we can sell now. Um, lettuces, tomato, strawberries. Uh, the one thing I have done on the greenhouses on this map, as opposed to how Baylor on in my other Let's Play series, is I've set all the greenhouses to direct sell. So they won't actually be making pallets. You won't see pallets appearing out of the front of the greenhouses with my tomatoes and lettuces and strawberries and that in. They're just going to be sold directly from the greenhouses. Saves me having to transport them at the moment. Obviously, on how Baylor on, I am transporting and selling pallets of products. I don't really want to repeat that too much in this series. It's one of the reasons why I decided to go down the road of let's do an episode where I'm chopping down trees and um, doing that which was my intended plan for episode two, but unfortunately, OBS failed to record it. But I might do it again, because like I say, I might get the equipment and we might go remove a few trees down the bottom there of the map, um, because that will give me... I can get my silo placed down there then, and then we can get some sheds for parking future machines and equipment in. At the moment, obviously, we've only got this one tractor We've got this plow. We've got a trailer over there by the um, the, the 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 barn shed thing. Uh, I've got a water tank and I've got a water tanker. That's it. That's been the um, the uh, if you like the the 
the depths and limits of my equipment. <laughs> now, we'll probably break off at certain points and, and have a look at the contracts that are available on the map. It might be an idea to go and make a bit more money. <laughs> so we might go do some contracting. Dolores might. Yeah, we're, we're, we're slowly getting there. As I say, this big area is nicely ploughed. The roads are disappearing. One thing that I do love is the fact that the PDA and the minimap is now dynamic. So when you go in, you, you can see, look, oh, there's no roads. Chopped everything out. I love that. Again, weird how giants apply dynamic effects to things like that, but won't actually give you dynamic effects when you're doing your, um, your actual field work, when you're doing your seeding. You're fertilizing, you're spraying, etc. So you can actually see as you're as you're doing it where you've been and where you still need to be. It's a strange one. It's it, there's one that, that is a little bit of one of those strange things that baffles me a little bit about giants <laughs> that they do that. They tell, they tell you one thing, that they can't do dynamic mini-maps and dynamic HUDs and stuff like that for when you're doing your, your work. And then they go and do a dyna dynamic mini-map for when you're removing and placing entire fields. <laughs> right, we've got some stones as well. Oh, stone picking. Man, or rolling. Mm. I don't know if I can roll the um, these stones that have been dug up with the plough. I think they're too big. But rolling is definitely preferred if you can do it, because obviously you can get way bigger rollers than you can stone pickers. So a field of this size, it would be, you know, preferably better to be able to go over it with a roller. Um, rather than everything else. But yeah, let me just quickly head up here. Finish this field quickly. Uh, we'll then probably head to the store and we'll probably grab the, um, the wood chipper again and the um, stump grinder. And then I'll show you a little bit of the um, logging uh, not log. I won't really call it logging, but basically tree removal because I wasn't selling logs. I wasn't doing like big pine trees and stuff and trying to um, get wood sell. Um, I'll tell you what, it probably would have been faster for me just to have put the, the bits of wood in a normal trailer, took that to a wood selling place and just sold it for whatever they gave me. Um, because the wood chipping, as you will see, is quite finicky and um, a little bit borderline stupid. Right, um, what I need to do next, uh, what I need to do next, uh, that's all been done. Um, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to put a little strip. I'm just going to plow one more little strip just along here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a, a grass edge on the field. Much like there's a grass edge on the field now. I'm just going to put that back in. I just want to make sure the edge is neat and tidy all along here. Put a nice new edge on the bottom of the field. Probably going to make the roads a little bit wider 
as well is my is my initial plan. Uh, on a bit far, a bit far now. Oh well, we'll carry on. Really, all of that needed, all of this field needed ploughing too. Um, that is something I can probably do off the camera, and I'm sure everyone will be like, okay, see what we've seen you ploughing, we've seen you doing a lot of ploughing, we've watched you doing a lot of ploughing in Hout Baylor on. Do not do any more ploughing, see what let's move on. Yes, I hear you people, I'm gonna move on. I'm just gonna do this one little bit. That reminds me then that I need to remove all of that bit as well. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to drop this just over here somewhere. I've, the reason for concrete in this big area is so I've got room to park vehicles and equipment. Because there's not a lot of space around the rest of the map because of where um, giants have placed um, objects and things. Um, so I, I, I sacrificed one field do the whole uh, right landscaping uh, we are going into uh, uh, painting we want uh, we are going to want grass now this is where I get a little bit of a problem normally because it always places a little bit Right, I'm just going to try and try match this area up. Now, I'm not finding, might be just be me. The painting tool, um, as, a, as a general rule, doesn't seem to be quite as... Um, nice see it's 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 not moving in camera camera angle is a lot more um i think a lot more important this year for your ability to paint nice straight edges back on the field that'll do for that bit uh, now we need to do a little bit more along the bottom here. Right, I'm going to make this a bit bigger for this bit. You see, it's it's going wonky. Ooh, that's going to drive me mental. Because now my field's wonky. Look. And now if I paint there, I guarantee you... You know what, maybe we just put up with it we we live with it folks because um fields wouldn't be perfectly straight in real life because you know nature doesn't do perfectly straight and it's one of my the things i've always complained about with with mod maps how a lot of mod maps come out with just square and rectangle fields and i'm like please stop that you don't have perfectly square and rectangle fields in real life Stop doing it in the game, folks.
Now, once you've painted, obviously, all of this, going to be causing me a headache for days. There we go. It's like the cursor doesn't lock in place. It, it kind of follows the camera. So if you're just a little bit out with your camera alignment, then the cursor's over a long distance. It's just going to gradually... Um, creep and do some feel it's going to creep and you're going to end up with wonky edges right so we've painted that bit now what we need to do is we need to go into plan I'm not going to use bushes because they're massive Bit of meadow, I think. And this just makes it look nice and pretty again. So plant, uh, painting grass is a two-step process in Farming Simulator 22, for those of you that aren't aware. Um, you have to put down... Um, you have to paint the, 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 gre the grass texture, the, the base texture, okay, which is what I did first. And now you're actually painting the actual grass. This is the actual grass bit of the grass, okay? So it's a it's a it's a it's a two stage thing. Um, it is. Uh, I'll go a bit smaller, please, with my tool, because this area is going to get fiddly. There we go. Just paint that in. Paint that in. Then. I think the grass that I've over over sprayed, if you like, onto the field will get taken out when I um when I actually um cultivate and stuff. So I'm not terribly fussed about that. Um, and then basically from there, what I need to do is go back to painting, uh, asphalt, dirt, gravel, gravel, gravel works very well. See now, probably works better if I change the tool into a round one. I can paint my uh, my gravel road, and the thing about the gravel road is I don't have to be terribly neat with it. There, bit of landscaping done, folks. Right, let's go get. It. The tree chopping stuff that you sadly didn't see me fighting and struggling with in the last episode. So head up to the store. Um, they have removed some of the, obviously, some of the, the tree chopping stuff that we used in Farming Simulator 19 sadly has been removed from the game and is no longer available. Um, which is a little bit annoying because some of it was very, very useful, especially for the task that I'm doing, which is just basically removing trees. I'm not actually looking to get to like logs and stuff like that. I'm not looking for that. I just want to basically remove trees so I can use the area, put buildings and objects onto. Um, so we're, we're kind of missing a, uh, a little bit in that regards. Um, one of the things I did find as I came down here in episode 2, where this uh, bowling alley place type thing is, 
professional hand painted signs where that finger is actually pointing downward there was a collectible on that 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 roof there was a little combine harvester collectible which i went and picked up i had to i had to use i had to jump on the roof of the tractor to be able to get up there but i was able to get it um so yes got a few collectibles um right so in in here what i leased to help me do my tree chopping stuff was uh under the forestry section is it forestry equipment okay i grabbed one of these which is a bit different from the the machine i used um in fs19 um the actual uh grinder uh wood chipper in fs19 was much different much different and it was much better because it had a great big long platform basically you loaded um you basically you loaded your you, you tr there was a thing that folded down on the back like a, a table that allowed you to put your your wooden stuff on that fed into the chipper and then the chips come out the side uh, this one's a bit diff. This machine's a bit different, and I'll be honest, um, I'm not a big fan of it compared to the previous one. I think it was the jet. Was it the Gens? I thought it was the Gens wood chipper. I thought Gens wood chipper was very useful in FS19. The great thing about the Gens wood chipper as well, and the reason that I kind of like that, was because that could be powered independently. You didn't need to have it hooked up to a tractor. You could, once you'd park, got it parked where you wanted it and where you was going to use it, you could disconnect the tractor, hop into the actual wood chipper itself and turn the wood chipper on. So the wood chipper could be like stationary in one place. But uh, it also didn't have the crane on it. Now I'm not going to use the crane. The crane on this thing I'm not even using. I don't need to use the crane for doing the, the tree chopping that I'm going to be doing. It's just, obviously, it's a little bit, it's a little bit awkward when you're trying to, uh, I think, I think there's, there's room for, um, obviously, devices. I think that it would have been better if we just had a more specialised, this is purely designed and dedicated as a wood chipper type device rather than this thing which i think i think this machine on the back here tries to be a jack of all trades don't think that really works too well um so if i unfold it obviously the crane's going to pop out which as i say I'm not going to be bothered by um So I'm just going to swing that out of the way above the cab. Um, one of the things I do need to do. Now you notice the, the, the input for this is on the opposite side. So I do need to swing round with my. Um, so basically all log, all the little bits of logs get fed into that. Other side out there. Go in the side there. Right. One thing I do need. I need to go get my trailer. This thing doesn't, it only holds about 20,000 litres of wood chips, and then you've got to overload into a trailer. So, let's go get my trailer. I bought this trailer because it, it's, it's kind of the right sort of size for the um, wood chipper. The wood chipper can actually tip into this if you've got a trailer that uh, that's too high sided um like um you know if you've got something like the, that or you've got something like um that or even like that um you will not be able to tip your wood chips into it <laughs> using this machine um which i will demonstrate in a in a in a in a in a moment when I actually come to unload this thing. Um so I'm gonna park this over here. 
Don't park it too close because the way this thing um, loads and unloads, it's a bit weird. Uh, and it can catch on the trailer then when it's folding back. Right. Wood chipper is on, folks. Stand well clear. Keep arms and limbs away from, obviously, there. Otherwise, you will chop your arms and limbs off. Right. Let's start with a tree. One of the things I did notice as well there um, yesterday, as I was doing this, uh, was the fact that tree chopping is a little bit random. <laughs> Sound disappears from the chainsaw quite a bit, glitches out. Right, we need to chop all these little spriggly bits off now. Um, typically, what I, what I suggest doing, or what I, if I cut there, anywhere where there's like a spriggly bit coming off the tree, um, if you choose to cut, it's going to get rid of that spriggly bit. Same at the end. You, you you cut somewhere near the end of the tree, if I can find an end point. Yeah. It gets rid of the bushy bit off the end. So, yeah. Wherever you can cut, get rid of a, like the spriggly bits. The bushy bits. It helps you to... Um, Helps you to see where you're um, cutting, basically. Now, I did have, like I say, did have some issues with this yesterday. <sighs> um, now we've got spriggly bits everywhere. Want to get that top one, please? Oh, it's because there's a log under there. Uh, can I get that little bit out? I can. Right, let's go put this in the in the chipper. And um, I had, like I say, I had numerous problems doing this. logs bits of logs just f flying and flipping around all over the place um was not very conducive to the process it was beginning to infuriate actually actually yesterday i was beginning to get quite exasperated with it all with the whole process um so <laughs> I'm, I'm probably pleased episode two has been lost in time. Um, now this what this log I'm going to have to chop up because it's all crooked. I know people would say you normally wouldn't bother cutting down bendy trees like this. You normally tend to stick to like the pine trees, the straight trees, and not, you know typically in farm sim. When you're doing logging and stuff, that those are the trees you're chopping down. The nice straight, perfectly straight trees that you, you've planted and you've grown and stuff like that. But, you know, some for those of us that are building farms and building our own setups and clearing out areas, we have to cut down these bendy trees and obviously we need to be able to get rid of them. However, they're not as easy to get rid of as um, the giant's as the um normal trees right we need to cut that bit off um let's start at the top we've got bendy bits there and there we're gonna have to trim this log in a bit 
whether that's actually no that's not connected that is a separate bit of log right i tell you what it's a bit hard to see some of the logs when they're small small in diameter in the grass it was even worse when this area was full of bushes i've actually been round with the paint tool as best as i can and remove the bushes because otherwise once you chop down trees it was very very hard Again, I'm just looking for where there is stuff growing off the tree um, because we want to we don't want to have we don't want to start carting logs over here with branches sticking off with bushy bits because they do get stuck on this machine they get stuck and then you have all sorts of problems because the machine's trying to take the log in but the bushy bits blocking it and then like I say, giant's weird physics. The whole machine starts. I think I've removed that. Yes. No, no, no twid twiddly bits on this. This is a bit long. Might just have to support this one a bit as I feed it into my machine. Go. It's this bit in the middle of the tree that causes you the problems. Where all these um, extra limbs sort of are growing. If I drag this out of the way, bring it over here near my log ch chopper, we can now start trying to uh, make this a bit more manageable putting in the machine it's not perfect these, these bits of the tree where the you basically get all the branches growing out um, this will give you the most difficulty as far as removing it I want to get to that bottom one if I can See if we can remove, get rid of these bits first. And again, I'm just picking up, rotating with the hand tool. Look at that look, floating logs. <laughs> some of, and like I say, some of these bits will give you issues. Like, for example, this. This log is floating. I think these logs have... Um, I'm going to put that to one side. Because that... Because it doesn't sit on the ground. I don't... I reckon they're the ones that give me problems. Going through the actual machine. And like I say, in the, in, in the first video I recorded, the machine leapt about all over the place with some log you put some tiny i put some tiny little bits of logs in and it caused the whole thing to flip all over the place so i was like whoa There you go. And now there's a log stuck. Now we've got a log stuck. It's...
Go on, eat that log. Go on, eat it. Oh! So now I'm moving the whole thing. Now the whole machine's moving. Hey, what? This it gives you nightmares, this machine. See, that's moved now quite a long way, so I, I kind of need to shift that back a bit. <laughs> um, let's hop in the machine. Right. Am I close enough to do my unloading? Probably not. We are full, though. 16,000 litres, so yeah. Doesn't hold a lot of wood chips, this machine. Coincidentally. But if we, we pick that up, we zoom right in, we get a picture for the thumbnail. There we go. So you can see how that kind of works. So basically, we just chop down the trees. We feed them in. And um, we get a trailer full of wood chips, which we can then take off and uh, dispose. So what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to carry on. I'm probably going to take that tree out. I'm going to take that tree out, that tree out, and probably the one all the way down here on this corner. I'm probably going to take those out, and then that will give me room then to place my silo and other things. <coughs> so I'm going to carry on with that off of camera. Um, when we come back in the next episode, we'll carry on doing our field alterationing. We'll get all that ploughed up, and um, then we'll start getting the more the roads put back in, and then we'll start to um, uh, we'll, um, basically decide what we're actually going to plant, what we're going to use as our first crops on this particular map. So thank you for watching today's episode, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Go ahead and click that like button for me. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. Leave me your comments in the comment section down below. And um, don't forget to share the video everywhere you see fit with everyone you see fit. Um, I've been C. Waddy. This has been the Elm Creek map. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Stay safe, and I will see you all again soon. I've moved the machine again. Oh, this log needs a bit of work. That had quite a bit of foliage still attached. Come on. Stop. I ought to press the square button to throw the logs, and then that definitely means I've let go of them. Otherwise, if the machine grabs the log, and I start backing away, and I've still got hold of the log, then I start pulling the machine with me. But anyway, folks, like I was saying, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next episode very, very soon.